Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live poster presentation, Antibody Purification, Development of Two New Highly Efficient Purification Resins, presented by Aaron McBride, a R&D scientist in protein and cell analysis at Thermo Fisher Scientific. I'm Susie Valdez, and I will be your moderator for today's educational webcast, presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Thermo Fisher Scientific. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during this presentation. Just click on that green Q&A button located at the lower left of your presentation window and type your questions into the box that appears on the screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, please notice that you will be viewing the poster in the slide window. To enlarge that window, just click on the screen icon located on the lower right. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of the presentation window or use the Q&A button to let us know that you're having a problem. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Aaron McBride. I will now turn the presentation over to him. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you, Susie. In today's talk, I will talk through a poster titled Antibody Purification Development of Two Highly Efficient Purification Resins and outlining the benefits of these two new antibody purification resins. Purifications can vastly differ from antibody to antibody. However, the initial capture step can be fairly similar. Most antibodies will be captured by one of four classical affinity ligands, protein A, protein G, protein AG, or protein L. But the ligand and the resin combination that truly makes the resin unique. The chromatography support can influence final purity similar to the ligand, but can also influence how you run your purification. The base resin can influence maximum flow rates, dilution volumes, and binding capacities, all of which impact the total efficiency of your purification scheme. In this presentation, we'll describe protein G and protein AG on Thermo Fisher Scientific's Poros Perfusion Chromatography Media. These resins offer significant advantages due to the unique properties of the poros bead and provide up to fourfold higher binding capacity when compared to a similar agarose based resin. But first, let's discuss the different ligands. The classical ligands for antibody purification are either protein A or protein G. Protein A binds at the CH2, CH3 cleft, but can also bind the VH3 variable region, allowing it to bind some fats. Protein A is used in the majority of the antibody purifications due to its better chemical tolerance and milder elution conditions. The disadvantage of protein A is that it does not bind IgG3 and does not bind all fats. Protein G is similar to protein A that it binds to the CH2, CH3 cleft, but also binds to the CH1 domain, allowing it to bind all fats. In addition, protein G binds IgG3 and has poor binding to other IgG subtypes such as IgA and IgM. The disadvantage to using protein G is that it does have lower chemical tolerance than protein A and a lower pH is needed for elution. While the majority of purifications are binding a human or humanized IgG antibody, there is also a significant amount of purifications that deal with non-human antibodies. The specificity of protein A and protein G to non-human antibodies can vary greatly and when choosing a ligand for a non-human antibody, each protein binding characteristic should be examined. In most cases, protein A and protein G are complementary, in that if protein A does not bind or binds weakly to one species, protein G will bind strong to that species. Now, for labs that are doing purification on a wide range of antibodies, there's protein AG. Eight, protein AG is a chimeric protein that combines the five antibiotic binding sites of protein A and two antibody binding sites of protein G for all in one resin. As mentioned previously, the resins we'll talk about have either protein G or protein AG immobilized to the porous base bead. This first graph compares dynamic binding capacity using human IgG for both porous MAD capture G select, protein G sephiros 4 FASLO, and protein G plus agarose resins. On the y axis, we have DBC and on the x-axis, we have multiple flow rates. 
MAD Capture G Select maintains close to double the binding capacity when compared to protein G sephiros 4 FASFO and maintains the binding capacity over a wide range of flow rates. This difference is achievable due to the unique pore structure of porous. Porous resins, resins differ from traditional agarose resins in that porous, the bead is transected by wide through pores, which unlocks the bead interior and allows for convective flow, in addition to much shallower diffusional length. Since diffusional distances are reduced, mass transfer is improved. This means that as linear velocity increases through the column, capacity and resolution are minimally affected. We look at the dynamic binding capacity of Poros Mad Capture AG Select and compare this with both the Poros Mad Capture AG Select and Pierce Protein AG plus Agros. Again, we see we show that dynamic binding capacity on the X on the Y axis and on the X axis we have multiple flow rates. As you can see, Mad Capture AG Select maintains a five-fold higher capacity for human IgG over our agros resins than multiple flow rates. Similar to the Poros Mad Capture G Select, the disc difference is seen due to the unique pore structure of Poros. However, binding capacity is just one of many variables when choosing a good purification resin. Another trait to look at is resolution. These chromatograms show a purification of goat IgG from goat serum using three different purification resins. Poros Mad Capture G Select, Protein G Sephiros 4 Faslo, and our Protein G Plus Agros resin. These resins were loaded with serum that contain approximately 12 mg of IgG. In the chromatogram, you can see that the Mad Capture G Select has a taller elution profile, indicating a higher binding capacity while also maintaining a smaller elution volume. The smaller elution volume is again due to the better mass transfer of the pore speed, in addition to the smaller bead size. The pore speed has an average particle size of 50 microns, while most agarose resins have an average particle of 90 to 100 microns. Having a particle size that is roughly the half the size of most other resins allows for superior resolution. In these chromatograms, again, we show purification using Poros Mad Capture G Select and protein G sephiros 4 fasol, but this time using mouse serum. As you can see from the chromatograms, both resins have similar binding capacity, but MAB Capture G Select has a more efficient mass transfer, which allows for the protein to be eluded in a smaller volume. If we look at Coral's MAB Capture A G Select, we'll see a similar story. In these chromatograms, we perform purification with human sera that contained approximately 12 mg of IgG. We can see that the MAD Capture AG Select maintains a higher binding capacity while also having efficient mass transfer demonstrated by its smaller elution volume. Lastly, an important aspect of a chromatography resin is the life cycle of the resin. In this figure, we identified if the resin can be used with minimal changes to the chromatogram and purity of the antibody. Here we took a single one mil column of Poros Mad Capture G Select and subjected it to 26 purifications in total. Six purifications of IgG from serum and 20 mock purifications. The fifth, first, and every fifth purification thereafter, IgG was purified from human serum, while all other cycles did not have any serum loaded on the column but performed mock purifications. A clean in place consisting of 70% ethanol and 2 molar sodium chloride was performed after all IgG and mock purifications. As you can see in the chromatograms, the first and the 26th run was identical, and the gel below shows that the purity comparison stained by Kumasi remained consistent throughout all the runs. In addition, we didn't observe any noticeable leaching of protein G from the resin. We also looked at the reusability of Poros Mad Capture AG Select. Again, we took a one mil column of Poros Mad Capture AG Select and it was subjected to 26 purifications in total. Six purifications of IgG from serum and 20 mock purifications. The first and every fifth purification thereafter, IgG was purified from human serum while all other cycles did not have any human serum loaded onto the column but performed mock purifications. A clean-in-place consisting of 70% ethanol and 2 molar sodium chloride 
was performed after all IgG and mock purifications. As you can see, the chromatograms of the first and 26th run was identical, and the gel below shows the purity comparison by Silverstein remained constant through all the runs. In addition, we did not observe any noticeable leaching of protein AG from the resin. In closing, the new Poros MAD capture resins presented in this talk showcased multiple advantages. Poros MAD capture G and AG showed superior dynamic binding capacity over a wide range of linear flow rates and across multiple species. These resins allow for smaller elution volume due to the neat pore structure of poros speed that allows for better mass transfer. And finally, MAD capture G and AG can be reused multiple times without changes to the peak shape or purity. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Aaron, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of our webinar. If you have questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window. Type your questions into the box that appear on your screen. Click on the Send button, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's get started with our first set of questions. What type of column do you recommend for POROS 50 um, resins? Do I need high pressure columns for poros? So the porous resins are mechanically rigid and incompressible. And so they can be effectively packed in either low pressure glass columns or high pressure stainless steel columns. In addition, the columns can be packed in either traditional flow, axial compression, or pack and place methods. So really they can be packed in um, just about any column you need them to be packed in. Thank you so much. We have a set of questions coming in. Here's the next one. How many uses should I expect out of my poros or capture select column? So really the resin lifetime is dependent on how the resin is used and the cleaning process that is utilized. So Really, the purification process will need to be evaluated specifically, especially in long lifetime as desired, um, because the binding can be different between resins and different cleaning schemes. So a non-optimized cleaning procedure for any resin may yield less than five uses, while an optimized cleaning process can be yield 100 or more cycles. Um, for these resins, we provide recommendations of either with 70% um, ethanol cleaning, followed by a two molar sodium chloride cleaning, and that has shown um, from our data to really extend the lifetime of the column. Thank you. It looks like we have one more question from our audience members. How many uses should I expect out of my poros? Um, and what type of column do you recommend for, oh, I'm sorry, that one was already answered as well. Okay. I think you've answered both of them. Thank you so much. If there aren't any more questions, we're going to go ahead and close. Did you have any closing remarks that you'd like to provide? Not at this time. Uh, I believe that um, the presentation really showed the, the use and the benefits of the MAP capture G and AG select resins. Um, and if you guys have any further questions, um, I'd, be, I'd be great to answer some. Wonderful, thank you. I'd like to once again thank our presenter for today's presentation. I'd also like to thank LabRoots and Thermo Fisher Scientific for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through May of 2018. You'll receive an email from LabRoots letting you know that this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.